All right, so this time we're gonna factor some expressions. This is a fairly difficult thing, especially when we have negative exponents or where the way you have polynomials, but the clever trick is we wanna use a few of the rules. One of the first good, really good rules is the difference of squares. As soon as you have, you see you have x squared minus a squared. We know that hopefully is x plus a, x minus a. <coughs> So we're going to be looking for those types of things along the way, including in particular in here and maybe in here somewhere. But then the first rule is anytime you have common terms, factor them out. So if I have x in every term, I can factor it out. If I have 2 in every term, I have to see this and break the numbers up and factor these things out. <coughs> so those are the two big ones. Try to see, the first thing I look at is to see if they have any common things in each term. If I do factor those out, then once we have done that, we want to simplify as much as we can further too. So we try to factor the polynomials or whatever's left by using clever factoring rules. The first one, what we have is 2x to the 3 over 2 minus 6x to the 1 half plus 4x to the minus 1 half. I'll do the first move first, which is the easier move. I'll take out. I notice I have x to the powers in each term, and I have 2 in each term. 2 times 1, 2 times negative 3, and 2 times 2. So you have to see that also. Each term is even, so I can pull a 2 out. So I'm going to do that. If you have to do it one at a time so you can see it, that's what I'm going to do. So first, I'm just going to take the 2 out of each term. 3 over 2 minus 3x to the 1 half plus 2 x to the minus one half. That's a minus one half. No, still not happy with you. Minus one half. So now what I see is I have x in each term, and this is the clever or the tricky part, we're going to pull out the neg we always pull out the lowest exponent of each power. So in this case it's negative one half. But what's going to happen is when we do for 3 over 2, what we're actually doing is we're taking this out of each term so or we're subtracting this from each value of the exponent but now when we subtract it when you did it with positive exponents it would subtract and then you would get lower exponents but now what it's going to do is make this three halves plus one half it's going to go up in value to two because we're going to subtract now a negative exponent so what's going to be left here when we do that we're going to have x to the three over two minus minus one half which will be x to the 4 over 2 or x squared. So let me do that move and then you'll see. You can contemplate. Pause. Equals 2 times. Now I'm going to take out the lowest exponent, x to the negative 1 half, which is now x squared, x to the 3 halves minus minus 1 half is x to the 4 over 2, which is x squared minus 3 times x to the 1 half minus minus 1 half is x to the 1 half plus 1 half which is x to the 1 plus 2. Now we have a quadratic we can beg, borrow and steal or watch some of the other videos we have the quadratic formula or we're gonna play the little game what multiplies to give me positive 2 and adds to give me negative 3 that's correct 2 to the x to the minus 1 half x minus 1 and x minus 2 and if you want to be really fancy this is 2 x minus 1 x minus 2 over to make this exponent positive I bring it to the bottom of the fraction and then this is x to the 1 half and 1 half is the square root of x so that is the expression simplified Notice that our, you are going to be do, using this scenario for calculus. One of the things that will happen often is that becomes the derivative of something, and then I want to know when this is zero. Can you tell when this is zero? No, I cannot. It's hard to tell, because remember, that's a negative exponent. It's not at zero, so, or when it doesn't exist. So it's a lot harder to see here, and you have to be careful. Here I can now see it. It doesn't exist at zero, and it's zero at one and two. So I have three critical numbers if this is what's happening. but. It's a whole lot easier to ask if we're going to actually ask if this thing is zero. It's a lot easier to answer it when it's simplified, and that's why we want you to do this. I, I. So I have negative 3x cubed plus 24x. So again, I notice I have x in both terms. 
and I have three in both terms. Eight times three is 24, so I'm gonna take that out first. Three x times x squared. What do I have left? I took out the, sorry, negative. I took out the three and I took out one x. What do I have left? Negative and x squared. And then plus eight. These ones are weird because I didn't use the right number. I cooked it up wrong. Ah, we're gonna keep going. Now, what I'm gonna do is it's not gonna be nice numbers. It'll be square roots of non-perfect squares. That's fine with me. So, actually, I don't want the negative on the uh, variable x squared. I want it on this constant. So I'm gonna write this as negative three x. I'm gonna pull out next and a negative out of both terms, and I get x squared minus eight. And so. Now what I'm gonna do is factor this, and to factor this, remember, now we're gonna use clever things like x squared minus a squared is equal to x plus a, x minus a. But I don't have a perfect square, so what am I gonna do with this? Root eight, what I'm gonna do, or eight, I'm gonna turn into the square root of eight squared. So that's the clever duty trick. I'm actually happy it worked out that way because when I have a perfect square, you just notice that it's x squared minus four and you get x squared x plus two, x minus two. But in this case now, I don't have a perfect square, but it's still a difference of squares. I'm gonna write it as x squared minus the square root of eight squared. So this is now equal to negative three x, x minus root eight, x plus root eight. And this is it this polynomial now factored completely. And the roots are zero, positive root eight, and negative root eight, which is two root two. Root eight is two root two. I, 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 or three. So first I see I have x to the four minus 16. What I see is that is x squared, squared using exponent laws, that's four is two times two, and then I separate them, minus four squared, 16. So first I run this once on x squared and four. This is x squared plus four, x squared minus four. But now I notice I have it again, four is actually two squared, x squared plus four, but this is x squared minus two squared is what I see. And so that is x squared plus four. This is irreducible. The discriminant is negative, so we can't reduce this. It has no zeros. X squared plus four it never touches the x axis. So this one can be factored into x plus two, x minus two. So that is that expression completely factored. And eventually you want to know that, how to argue why you can't reduce that anymore. The discriminant b squared minus four ac is less than zero in this case. b is zero, so zero squared minus four times one times one is negative four, which is less than zero, so this can't be factored. It has no real roots, it has two imaginary roots. Two i and negative two i. For the last one, what do we have? Let me rewrite that actually since we can use the whole board now. I have x to the five plus x to the four minus x minus one. This is not usually gonna work out like this. This is not gonna usually work out like this where a degree five polynomial just factors into a nice a bunch of linear factors or irreducible quadratics. It's not hard to find the roots given a degree five or polynomial or higher. In fact, it's impossible in some scenarios. This is Galois theory. We'll do a talk about Everest Galois and his gun duel and all of these things. That'll be in another video coming soon. So right now I just want to factor this, which is not easy in general, says Galois. So the first thing I'm going to do is write this cleverly. I see two odd terms and two even terms is essentially what I'm going to do first. So I'm just splitting it like this. And now I'm trying to be as clever as I can to factor something out of this. So now I see that these both have x in them, so I'm gonna factor an x out of those. That's x, x to the four minus one, plus x to the four minus one, which is actually one times x to the four minus one. Now I have this in both terms, so I can factor it out. That is equal x to the four minus one, 
times x plus 1, <coughs> whatever's left. Now that I have that, what I can do is, this is now 1 to the 4, so this is uh, the same thing as what we just did with the x to the 4 minus 16, but now we have that this is x squared minus 1, x squared plus 1, and then x plus 1, which we still had. And now this is a, all again a difference of squares, 1 squared. So this is x plus 1, x minus 1, x squared plus 1, x plus 1. Which if we simplify that, I have two of these. So we can write this as x plus 1 squared, x minus 1, x squared plus 1 are the three linear terms and the one quad irreducible quadratic term completely factored.